I don't know about you guys, but I am ready for a spring break and a little fun in the sun. So this is going to be our last homework video this week. I want you to turn to page 742 um, in your textbook, your volume 2 textbook, um, to the talk to talk, talk the talk page. Um, so pause the video and go to 742. Okay, so we're going to look at some different, uh, factoring some different trinomials here. Um, a is what we've been doing, so I'd like you to go ahead and complete A on your own. Um, but I want to focus on B here. B, you can notice that these are in a little bit different format than we're used to. Um, and one of the things that you should be doing when looking at these binomials is first seeing if there's something you can factor out before we start the process of putting them in, into two binomials. So looking at B, I see there's a 4 as a coefficient, a negative 20, and a 6. And automatically I see that 4 is um, a GCF, and we'll be, you can divide 4 into each of these terms. So before we, start, before we start our binomials, we're going to factor out a 4 of each one of these trinomials first. So each one of them I'm able to divide by 4. So just like all our factoring, we bring out our 4 first, and then we'll have um, 4 divided by 4 is 1, or just x squared, minus 20 divided by 4 is 5x, and then 16 divided by 4 is 4. All right, um, so now um, that this is factored, I can see that, that I can make binomial, um, a multiplication binomial. So you can either do the box method that some of you like. I like the t-chart method where I look at and I see what factors of 4 factors being multiplied will add to negative 5. And 4 is pretty simple because there's just 4 times 1 and 2 times 2. So the only one that could possibly get me to 5 would be the 4 times 1. It's got to add to negative 5 but it's got to multiply to positive 4. So automatically that tells me it's going to be negative 1 times negative 4, because a negative times negative is a positive, so it's going to give me positive 4. However, when I add it, negative 1 plus negative 4, that will equal the, positive, or the negative 5. So for this, my final answer is I need to keep the 4 on the outside here, and then I'm going to do my binomial. So we're going to have our x in the uh, first position. And then um, negative 1, negative 4. So put minus 1 and minus 4. And if I want to do a little check, negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. x times x is x squared. And negative 1x and negative 4x gives me the middle term, negative 5x. All right, so then moving on to b, or uh, excuse me, c here. Um, I can see that these are out of order of the standard form. So the first thing I want to do is rewrite this in the correct order. So that's negative b squared plus 9b and then minus 20. Okay. Um, b, remember, um, ax plus bx equals c. Okay. So now looking at that, um, I got a negative in front of the b squared. I don't really like that. Um, so what I can do is I can divide everything through by a negative 1. Then by doing that, I put my negative 1 out front, or you can just put negative. You don't have to have the 1. And now a negative divided by a negative would give me a positive b squared. And then um, a 9 divided by negative 1 would give me negative 9b. And then negative 20 over negative 1 would give me a positive 20. Okay. And then um, from here, I can um, go ahead and look at my binomial. And again, I'm just going to make my t-chart. What multiplies to 20, but will add to negative 9. Um, and that's going to be very similar to B. So why don't you go ahead and finish, pause the video and... Um, finish. Okay, D is a little trickier. Um, it's something that we hadn't seen before um, because we don't have any factors that will divide into that. But we have a coefficient um, for the y squared up front here. So um, 
just think this one we're just gonna um, sort of think about um, and again you can use the the t chart or the box method um, but the box method might be uh, better to use in this case visually so as we've been using the box method we know that the 3 y squared is going to go in this first box then we think about this is your multiplication well, what multiplies to 3 y squared well we know it's good. the factors of 3 are just 3 and 1 so it's going to be 3 y times y 3 y times 3 y equals 3 y squared then my constant goes here and again there's not a lot of options for negative 3 it's just 1 times 3 and one of them needs to be negative um, so either it's going to be negative 1 times 3 or negative 3 times positive 1. But looking at my middle, middle term, it's kind of a larger middle term. So I'm going to assume that it's negative 3 times positive 1 equals negative 3. Now we want to go ahead and fill out this box. This is going to be negative 3 times y, because negative 3 times y. And then this is going to be... Um, 3 times y as well, which gives me um, 3y. Now I notice that 3y minus 3y gives me uh, 0y, so that can't be the correct term there. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to switch the places around. So to see if we can get that to work. So I'm going to try putting negative 3 here and positive 1 here. So I still get 3 times 1, which is negative 3. So now here I get 1 times y, which is 3y. And then here I get 3y times negative 3, which is negative 9y. And so now I have um, negative 9y times 3y, and that will give me negative 6y. So going back, that doesn't look right. Um, and I hope you saw my error here. <laughs> what is 1 times y? That should be 1y, right? No coffee yet this morning. There we go. But the idea is that you need to check and make sure that items are making sense. So when I got there, I thought, well, that doesn't make sense. That should be negative 8y, and my, it wasn't making it. So I went back and looked at my multiplication and found my error. So now I know negative 9y plus 1y will give me negative 8y. So my um, binomial here is going to be 3y plus 1, and then y minus 3. Um, and you could have done the t-chart. The t-chart method really wouldn't work here. Um, you could have just tried um, guess and check where doing this, I know that 3y times y has to give me 3y squared. And then you have to know that 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. And then um, this was going to give you 1y and negative 3y. So you could have just kind of messed around with putting the different terms in to see where those would work. All right, hopefully on E, you'll see that there is a GCF here. So I think E you can do on your own. We'll check that in class. Um, and F we'll do together. Um, F, we have a y to the third, a y squared, and a y, and a 3, and a negative 27, and a negative 3y. So you should see that there is a GCF in, um, in this trinomial before we get started. Um, these all can be divided by 3. However, they also all have the variable y in them. This has y, this is y times y, and this is y times y times y. So our GCF is going to be 3y, because they all have at least one of these. So I'm going to bring the 3 out front, and then we know 3 divided by 3 is 1. Then we need to remember our exponent rule, that we subtract the exponent. So 3 minus 1 is 2. So that's going to be y squared. And also, if you think about this as a side note, y to the third is y times y times y and you're dividing that by y. So one of those should cross off, leaving you with y times y, which is y squared. But the shortcut is just to subtract them. All right, so we're gonna bring down our minus here. 27 divided by three is nine. And then again, y squared, y one, subtract two minus one, and we'll just get y to the one power, or y. 
and then again bring down our minus and then 30 divided by 3 is going to give us 10 and then uh, the y's will cross off here okay and then I think this was similar to this first problem so if you did this first problem you shouldn't have too much trouble with that problem so you should have completed A and E and then um, finished up F here. You need to uh, factor this into a trinomial. Um, so the idea of this lesson was to understand that trinomials, sometimes you have to first factor them. Sometimes you have to put them in the correct order. And sometimes they don't follow our rules and we have to use um, either a box or guess and check method to see which one will um, correctly multiply out. So this is going to be your last video homework assignment this week. Um, I hope you all have a great spring break next week. And um, I will let you know in class about some extra credit.